Kalea paradigm shift is two things. Firstly, it is a solid, though teasingly short, narrative experience. And secondly, it's one of the more technically ambitious titles on Switch. Were I to review it traditionally, I'd say that it is a highly experimental, narrative-driven game that is over far too quickly. However, I feel that to do this would not place an adequate focus on exactly what it is that Alea Paradigm Shift is trying to do, and what makes it impressive. Despite having a very small team, the core of which was only two people, Alea Paradigm Shift manages to push out visuals rarely seen on Switch, even in high-budget releases. As such, it's arguably as much a tech demo as it is a traditional game. With that in mind, I want to place my focus on the graphical achievements present in Alea Paradigm Shift on Nintendo Switch. First things first, if flashing lights bother you, you may not want to watch this video. You've been warned. Alea Paradigm Shift employs the full gambit of modern rendering techniques and combines them with a lush particle system and a richly detailed world. The first thing you'll see when starting up the game is a character sitting in front of a window through which is visible a vast cityscape. Futuristic ships fly between the buildings, illuminated by bright neon lights. As the camera spins around, we see a room with real-time screen space reflections active on virtually every surface. Dynamic lights illuminate the room and reflect realistically, while ambient occlusion fills out the dark corners with shadow. As the camera turns again, we see that the world outside has been replaced, with a planet being orbited by a distant ship. Light from a star shines in, casting a flare across the lens and illuminating small smudges on its surface. A waving family disintegrates in a swirling sea of glowing particles, which the camera flies through on its way out into space. Finally, we arrive at the menu. Before you can even choose to officially start a new game, Alea Paradigm Shift has already made a strong statement on what you can expect from it. Stunning visuals, excellent direction, and not to mention an outstanding and ethereal music score. After another brief interlude of weird things happening and lots of fun colors flashing across your screen, you're finally given the opportunity to move around and explore. Here is where we can really start to appreciate what is going on. The first area that you're dropped into is a house. While you have a specific objective at all times and only really need to visit a few rooms, the whole house is fully modeled and accessible. See these lights? Pretty much every one of them is dynamic and either reacts to the player's proximity or can be turned off and on. In fact, most of the lights in the entire game are dynamic, volumetric light sources rather than pre-baked lighting. Now take a look at this spa area. Notice how the water combines a simple but effective shader with screen space reflections to create an effect that, while not necessarily realistic, is quite aesthetically pleasing. Those light sources really help in this scene as well. You may have heard me mention ambient occlusion earlier. You can see it clearly in this bedroom, where a subtle shading is applied to corners and edges. It simulates the way light and shadow behave in the real world, and it makes the room feel more solid. Later, a lightning strike takes out the power, and we're left with a flashlight that casts real-time shadows. As we progress, we're continually greeted with more impressive rendering techniques. Look at the way this strange warped bubble interacts with the sun as it casts god rays. You can see it here in this hologram as well. I especially like how the rays take on the color of the semi-translucent surface they're passing through. In this case, they turn blue as they pass through this hologram. Aboard the RSS Recovery, we're once again treated to an incredible amount of screen space reflections. I'm not exaggerating when I say it's almost every surface. So what's the downside? How can the Switch possibly output visuals like this? Well, I think if you've been watching this long, it should be evident. Alea Paradigm Shift runs at a pretty low resolution. Though it is smoothed over by what looks like temporal anti-aliasing, it also doesn't run flawlessly, even at this resolution. Frame rate hiccups are pretty regular, along with pauses when moving into new areas. Unfortunately, both of these things do impact gameplay. It's clear that the focus during development was on crafting a world. Elements of the actual game design seem to take a back seat. Your character moves frustratingly slow, and the few puzzles are often vague and obtuse. Perhaps most egregiously, Alea Paradigm Shift ends just as it feels like the plot is getting somewhere. This ultimately added to my perception of it as more a tech demo than a traditional game. That being said, it was a tech demo I had a lot of fun exploring. 
As someone who always loves seeing developers try to push something out of an underpowered system, Alea Paradigm Shift absolutely scratched an itch for me. While your mileage may vary, it might be worth checking out if you suspect you might enjoy a stunning journey over a traditional gameplay experience. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to Nintendo World Report TV and checking out NintendoWorldReport.com for a whole lot more. If you'd like to chat with us about this or any other Nintendo game, you can join our Discord using the link in the description. This video was made possible by our generous supporters on Patreon. Did you know that Nintendo World Report is funded directly by fans like you? When you support Nintendo World Report on Patreon, you get immediate access to multiple exclusive podcasts every month, exclusive Discord channels, an early look at select content, and more, all for as little as a dollar a month. Check out patreon.com slash nwr for all the details.